Today, we're going to talk about the most important part of your body, the brain. Eric Chedler is a neuroscientist with a strong passion for teaching. Remember, neurons are like little batteries. They generate a little bit of electricity. And a creative approach. Juggling, that's my brain in action. My brain helped me catch things. My brain helped me see. In 1996, Eric formed Neuroscience for Kids, a program and website that helps teachers educate middle school students about the brain and nervous system. Well, I think it's real important that people learn about how the brain works. And so one of the goals I have about teaching people, especially kids, about how the brain works is that maybe I can inspire one of those kids to find out something about the brain that we really don't know about. Last May, Eric got the opportunity to bring his teaching to a new group of students. It's a program that's called Science for Monks, and it was established about 10 years ago. And it's a program to teach Tibetan Buddhist monks about Western science. Eric, along with two other Western scientists, was invited to teach at a Buddhist monastery in India. The journey itself was quite a challenge. Just traveling uh, 20, 25 hours to get to India and landing at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning in a completely foreign uh, land is, is, is quite stressful. And from there, it was a two-hour car ride uh, to a small town called Beer in very northern India. And it was a very bumpy road. Uh, I guess it was a two-lane road, but it occasionally went to just a single lane. And then there were the communication issues. The monks and nuns spoke little English, and Eric spoke no Tibetan. So he had to be creative in his teaching methods. A lot of the words in neuroscience are literally Greek and Latin. And they have, those are the derivatives of a lot of the words in neuroscience. You know, hippocampus, cerebral cortex. They really are Greek and Latin. When you use these terms, it's sometimes difficult because there's a language barrier. And so hands-on activities uh, and learning what the language means can help in having a person understand. With some creativity and the assistance of translators, Eric presented lessons that were fun and engaging for his students. Uh, teaching neuroscience seems like it's a complicated uh, topic, but we're all walking, talking laboratories that we have to, we're able to test ourselves. So I would present a concept, for example, uh, reflexes, and I would explain the pathway involved, for example, the, the knee-jerk reflex. I would diagram that for them, and then we would demonstrate it. And for the optic nerve, we had a, a, an eye chart. Luckily, Eric already had a wealth of teaching aids from which he could draw. So all of the activities that I took to India were all developed through neuroscience for kids. So they're, they're good for adults, they're good for kids. Uh, they're not so good for, for professional neuroscientists because there's always, they're models. So they don't work completely, uh, you know, the, the same way that nervous system work. But a lot of them are, are very good models that can be used to illustrate concepts. Eric shared his knowledge of Western science, but his students had much to show him as well. I'm not an expert in, in Tibetan Buddhist religion, but I was able to have conversations with a number of the monks and nuns about some of their beliefs. Uh, and there is, I wouldn't call it a clash, but I would say there is a difference in some of their beliefs in that uh, they, from my understanding, their belief that the brain and the mind are separate is different than mine in that, in, in my own uh, belief, uh, the brain and the mind are together. The mind is a product of the brain. Considering the differing worldviews between Western science and the Buddhist religion, you may be wondering, why teach neuroscience to Buddhist monks? Well, Science for Monks was created over a decade ago in response to urging from the Dalai Lama that science education be integrated into monastic curriculum. Even though the monks and nuns have a tremendous amount of education, they don't get a lot of neuroscience and Western science. And so some of those basic concepts that are ingrained within Western society, they're quite foreign to the monks and nuns. And so the goal of the project is to have them understand some of these uh, neuroscience concepts so that when they go back to their own communities, they can be the go-to people there. And perhaps by gaining a better understanding about how the nervous system works, uh, they'll have a better appreciation for neurological disorders in their own communities. Their thirst for knowledge was fantastic. In fact, they're some of the best students that I've, I've ever encountered. 